In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to calculate cycle time in JIRA. Understanding how to calculate and interpret cycle time can be an incredibly valuable skill, especially if you're looking to optimize your team's workflow. By grasping this concept, you'll be able to identify bottlenecks, enhance productivity, and ensure smoother operations in your projects. So let's dive straight into it. The first thing you want to do is navigate to your JIRA board. This is the primary dashboard where all your tasks and project details are displayed. It's essentially your command center. Make sure you're signed into your JIRA account and from there, locate and open the board that's most relevant to the project whose cycle time you wish to calculate. Once you're on your JIRA board, take a look at the top navigation panel. Here you'll find a multitude of options, but what you're interested in at this stage is the reports section. Clicking on reports will grant you access to a suite of tools that can provide valuable insights into your project's progress and metrics. After selecting reports, you will be presented with various reporting options. For our purpose, you'll want to focus on the control chart. This option is available specifically in JIRA software projects and is essential for visualizing your cycle time data. The control chart aids in understanding how quickly work is moving through your workflow and helps pinpoint areas that may require improvement. With the control chart open, your next action is to choose a date range. This will determine the period for which you want to analyze the cycle time. Whether you're looking to examine the last week, the past month, or any custom period, selecting an appropriate date range is crucial so that you can receive data that is most relevant to your analysis needs. Following the date selection, proceed to select the column or status that you aim to track. This could typically be from in progress to done or any other statuses that fit your project's workflow. This step allows you to focus on the segments of the process you are most interested in and provides more precise data concerning how tasks are moving through the workflow stages. Finally, after you have set all these parameters, the average cycle time will be displayed as a trend over time within the control chart. This visualization is pivotal as it offers you a clear snapshot of how your team's efficiency evolves. From here, you can assess patterns, recognize any persistent delays, and thus make informed decisions on how to enhance your processes. And there you have it. By following these steps, you will effectively calculate cycle time in JIRA, equipping yourself with the insights needed to refine your team's workflow. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this guide useful.